Looking at the outer envelope of our building, it's clear that while many things can be described by having coincident points or linear behaviors, there are some curved sections of this building design and some circular columns. So we're going to need some tools to provide circular or radial based constraints to geometry on this drawing. An easy way to see this is to look at this corner in detail. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on it. Now by looking at the two concentric constraints, and we see that here in the ribbon, we see that there are two concentric constraints that are placed upon this circle. Now, if I hover over this first glyph, you'll see that it's between this circle and the interior arc segment. Hovering over the second glyph indicates this circle and the exterior arc segment. So what we've now done via use of two constraints is we form relationships between these three circular objects. Therefore, if I perform a grip edit on the center of this circle, the two arcs have no choice but to come with it in order to satisfy the concentric constraint. Now, that's not all that's going on because you'll notice that the wall segments intelligently reacted to the motion of this circle as well. So let's undo and evaluate why that occurred. What you can see here where the arcs meet the wall segment is that we have tangential constraints. One for each, the arc to the inside segment, the arc to the outside segment, and we have two more tangential constraints up here. This means that as the arcs move, the geometry forming the walls has to come with them in such a way that tangency to the arc segment is maintained. So in the first example, we looked at an orthogonal movement of this circle in this direction. Let's look at a non-orthogonal movement of it this time by selecting the centering point and moving off at an angle like this. And you can see what's happening. The concentric constraints will bring the two arcs along, but the tangential constraints between the arcs and their companion wall segments is what's bringing the wall segments along. So without concentric and tangential constraints, it would be impossible to get these kind of behaviors with arcs and circular entities. So these constraints really complete the puzzle and really allow us to look at the whole of this drawing in a fully constrained way that's totally reactive, very powerful, and the only thing you need to know is concentric and tangential.